In the previous video, we looked at an example of a plant-wide overhead rate applied to our two products, the basic toaster and the winged oven. We concluded that the company was making $12.98 of gross profit per basic toaster sold and losing $6.76 in gross profit per winged oven sold. In this video, we are going to apply a different overhead allocation method called activity-based costing to see if the gross profit per unit values change, or if they will be roughly the same as the numbers we found using the plant-wide rate. Before we jump into the example, let me explain how activity-based costing is different from the plant-wide overhead rate that we looked at in the past video. The plant-wide overhead rate takes the total overhead costs and assigns them to each product based on an activity that the company determines is related to overhead costs, often called an allocation base. We used the allocation base of machine hours in the last video. Activity-based costing first assigns overhead costs into several activity pools, let's say three, although oftentimes there are more than three. Each activity pool will allocate its share of overhead to the products based on a different allocation base. So there will be some allocation base for activity pool 1, another for activity pool 2, and yet another for activity pool 3. So while the plant-wide method uses only one overhead rate to allocate overhead costs, the activity-based costing method uses many different overhead rates. Returning to our toaster example, instead of three activity pools, we're going to have five. The activity pools are part production, machine setups, assembly, maintenance, and utilities. You may remember from the past video that the company has $117,000 of overhead costs, and the company has determined that those overhead costs can be split between the five activities as shown. The allocation base, or activity driver, is shown for the five activities. The company thinks that machine hours are related to the overhead costs in part production. Batches are related to the overhead costs for machine setups. Direct labor hours are related to the overhead costs in assembly. Inspections are related to the overhead costs in maintenance, and the number of square feet occupied is related to the overhead costs in utilities. We have the expected activity levels for the five activities, so we know the total number of machine hours, batches, etc., etc., expected to be used in this period. The next step is to calculate the five overhead rates, one per activity. We do this by taking the overhead assigned to each activity pool and dividing by the expected activity total. So for part production, we have $30,000 in overhead costs divided by the 500 total machine hours used, which gives us $60 of overhead costs to assign for each machine hour used. So we can add $60 per machine hour to our table. For machine setups, we have $21,000 that needs to be split amongst the 300 batches. So when we divide, we get $70 of overhead costs to assign for each batch. So we can add $70 per batch to our table. We can use the same process for the three remaining activities to get $9 of overhead per direct labor hour, $600 of overhead per inspection, and $5.10 of overhead per square foot occupied. Make sure that you understand how I got the last three overhead rates. I encourage you to pause the video and work out the calculations on your own to make sure your answers match what I have. Now we can use those overhead rates to assign overhead costs to the two products, the basic toaster and the winged oven. Here are the overhead rates that we just calculated in the last slide. We also have the activity usage for each of the five activities for the basic toaster and the winged oven. We need to calculate the overhead applied for each product. We can find the overhead applied by taking the activity usage for each product and multiplying by the overhead rate. So the overhead allocated to the basic toaster for machine hours is $60 per machine hour multiplied by the 150 machine hours used, which equals $9,000 of overhead applied. This overhead comes from the parts production activity pool, which is the overhead that machine hours is being used to allocate. So we can add $9,000 of overhead applied to our table for basic toasters. For the winged oven, we do the same process. $60 per machine hour multiplied by the 350 machine hours used gives us $21,000 of overhead applied based on machine hours for the winged oven. We can do the same process for batches. $70 per batch times 200 batches for the basic toaster equals $14,000 of overhead applied for batches to the basic toaster. $70 per batch times 100 batches for the winged oven equals $7,000 of overhead applied for batches for the winged oven. I'll give you a moment now to see if you can find the last three overhead applied amounts for the remaining three activities. Pause the video, calculate your answers, and then check back to see if you got the same numbers that I did. The answers for the final three overhead applied amounts are showing on the screen now. All we are doing is multiplying the overhead rate by the activity usage to get the overhead applied. Finally, we can add up the overhead applied for the five activities to get the total overhead applied for each toaster, 
For the basic toaster, we can add up these five values to get the total of $67,100 of overhead applied. For the winged oven, we can add up these five values to get the total of $49,900 of overhead applied. You might remember from the previous video that we produced 5,000 basic toasters and 2,500 winged ovens. We just calculated the total overhead applied to be $67,100 for basic toasters and $49,900 for winged ovens. So if we take the $67,100 of basic toaster overhead costs applied, and then we divide by 5,000 units, we get $13.42 of overhead costs per unit. If we take the $49,900 of winged oven overhead costs applied, and divide by the 2,500 units, we get $19.96 of overhead costs per unit. As I mentioned in the previous video, don't take the overhead cost per unit too literally. Since overhead costs include fixed costs, producing an additional winged oven does not mean that we'll have an additional $19.96 of overhead costs. Just view this as the amount of overhead costs allocated per toaster. Next we need to calculate the total cost per unit, which means we have to add up the three product costs, the direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. Remember that direct materials and direct labor costs will be the same regardless of the overhead allocation method used. Here I've listed the direct material and direct labor costs that we used in the last video. We just calculated the overhead to be $13.42 per unit for the basic toasters and $19.96 per unit for the winged ovens. Adding up the per unit cost gives us a total cost per unit of $38.42 for the basic toaster and $68.96 for the winged oven. Let's say that the price of a basic toaster is $45. That means we can find the per unit profit by taking the $45 price and subtracting the $38.42 cost per unit, giving us a $6.58 gross profit per unit. Let's say that we sell the winged oven for $75 each. $75 minus the $68.96 cost gives us $6.04 in gross profit per unit. We can also calculate the total profit by taking the profit per unit and multiplying by the number of units sold. You may remember that we sold 5,000 basic toasters and 2,500 winged ovens. $6.58 times the 5,000 basic toasters gives us $32,900 in total profit for the basic toasters, and $6.04 times 2,500 winged ovens gives us $15,100 in total profit for the winged ovens. We can calculate the total profit, which is $32,900 plus 15,100, which equals 48,000. Note that this is the same total profit that we had when we completed the problem using the plant-wide rate. The total profit shouldn't change based on the overhead allocation method. Okay, that's technically all there is to activity-based costing, but let's have a quick comparison to the results from the plant-wide method. For the plant-wide rate, the factory overhead per unit was $7.02 for the basic toaster, and the winged oven, oh, it looks like he flew away. Well. What can you expect from a toaster with wings? Anyways, we have a massive $32.76 of overhead cost per unit for the winged oven. With activity-based costing, or ABC, we saw that the overhead cost for the basic toaster increased to $13.42 and decreased to $19.96 for the winged oven. We saw a $12.98 profit per unit for the basic toaster under the plant-wide rate, which decreased to $6.58 under ABC. For the winged oven, we had $6.76 of loss per unit on the plant-wide rate, which turned around to a $6.04 profit per unit under ABC. That's quite a difference. Under the plant-wide rate, a manager may have stopped producing the winged oven, but now that we've done the activity-based costing analysis, we can see that the winged oven is actually profitable. Oh look, he's back. I guess he liked hearing that he was profitable. Who's a good toaster? You are! You are! As for profit, the plant-wide $64,900 for basic toasters decreased to $32,900 under ABC, and the $19,900 loss for the winged oven under the plant-wide method switched to a $15,100 profit under ABC. Again, realize that the total profit is $48,000 in either case. Under the plant-wide rate, $64,900 minus $19,900 is $48,000. And under the activity-based costing method, $32,900 plus $15,100 is also $48,000. The difference is that with a more detailed costing system, like ABC, a company will likely have better cost data on individual products, which can help them make more informed decisions. 
Each company will have to determine for themselves if it's worth the extra time, effort, and costs needed to implement an activity-based costing system, which will be influenced by the size and resources of the company and how large the overhead costs are as a proportion of the total product costs. Alright, I think that finishes up our video and example relating to activity-based costing.